Well, here we are at Wednesday, April 1st, in the year of our Lord, 33. This is often called Silent Wednesday because, unlike the other days of Passion Week, there's not as much recorded in Scripture that goes on. Some people refer to Wednesday as Spy Wednesday, however, because it's assumed that Judas took advantage of the lull in the week in order to meet up with the chief priests and conspire against Jesus. You see, the religious leaders wanted to destroy Jesus, but they were afraid because he was so popular with the crowds. So they were looking for an opportunity to arise that would allow them to deal with Jesus without the crowd's interference. And they found that opportunity in someone who was close to Jesus and would willingly betray him. Many people have wondered what would cause Judas to betray Jesus. And the scary thing about sin is that it's not always just one big thing that affects us. It's a series of small decisions that lead us into habitual sin and the terrible consequences that sin brings upon our lives. But the gospel accounts do all point to one occasion that highlights the struggle in Judas's heart. See, one day, Jesus and his disciples were having a meal when Mary, the sister of Martha, and Lazarus approached Jesus with a very expensive flask of ointment and anointed Jesus with it. Well, recognizing the incredible worth of the ointment, the disciples were horrified over what they considered to be a huge waste. They point out that the ointment could have been sold for over 300 denarii, which was more than a year's wages for most people. And that money could have been used for the poor. Of course, Judas didn't want to give it to the poor. He wanted to steal it from the money bag. Well, after this lavish display of affection for Jesus, Mark chapter 14 tells us that Judas went to the chief priests in order to betray him. If he couldn't get his money from the ointment, he was going to get it from the chief priests. Now this story reveals two different reactions to Jesus. There's Mary, for whom no gift was too great for the precious Son of God who came to save the world from sin. And then there's Judas, who was willing to trade Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Judas could quickly see the value of the ointment rolling down Jesus' head, but he couldn't see the true value of Jesus. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It's through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. So how much is Jesus worth to you? Would you gladly trade a relationship with him if it meant you could be rich or have whatever you value most in this world? Or would you gladly give up everything this world has to offer if it means that you get Jesus? As we continue on into Holy Week, consider how much Jesus is worth to you.